Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. As consumers, the concept of demand is familiar to all of us because we live it every day. We use our disposable income to buy goods and services to maximize our utility. From a pack of gum, to a plate of food, to a brand new car. If you have the income to buy it, and you're actively shopping for it, you have a demand for it. Let's see if this sounds familiar. You need a new pair of jeans, so you walk into a store looking to buy a pair that meets your needs, as long as the price is right. Because you're both willing and able to buy a pair of jeans, you have a demand for jeans the moment you walk into that store. Demand is defined as the various quantities of goods and services that consumers are willing and able to purchase at different price levels in the product market. In microeconomics, only consumers demand products. Consumers have needs and wants that must be satisfied by the consumption of goods and services. And so, market demand in microeconomics analyzes the demand of individual consumers or a group of consumers in individual product markets. In other words, your demand for those genes that you were shopping for or the demand of all consumers looking for genes in the gene market. This is the demand curve. Notice that it's a downward sloping curve. This is because the law of demand is in effect. The law of demand states that the relationship between price level and quantity demanded is inverse. This means that as prices rise in the market, consumers are less willing or less able to purchase the same quantity of output and therefore buy less. As prices fall in the market, consumers are more willing or more able to purchase the same quantity of output and therefore buy more. The inverse relationship that exists between price level and quantity demanded in the product market exists because of the law of diminishing marginal utility. This law states that as a consumer consumes a greater quantity of a good or service, he or she gains less and less utility with each additional unit consumed. In other words, each additional unit of output is less useful or satisfying to the consumer and therefore is not worth as much as the previous unit. As a result, a consumer will not be willing or able to purchase each additional unit of a good at the same price, and so they'll only buy the next unit if the price level decreases. For example, remember when you needed that pair of jeans? Let's say you walk into that store and find a pair you like at a price of $50. $50 is a price you're willing to pay, and so you decide to buy the jeans. This pair of jeans is a high utility for you because it instantly satisfies one of your wants. You don't even consider paying $50 for a second pair because that price is too high for a pair that doesn't provide as much utility as the first. I mean, you can only wear one pair at a time, right? And so, you take the jeans to the counter so you can pay and go home. And then, as you're paying at the counter, the sales associate tells you about the store's buy one, get one half off sale. Dear God, it's beautiful. This means that the price of the second pair isn't $50, it's $25. Nice! The second pair of jeans may give you a lower marginal utility than the first pair, but at a lower price, you're completely willing and able to buy them. And so, you buy the second pair and go home a happy customer. See? You never knew it. But all those buy one get one sales are simply taking advantage of the law of demand. A law that firms know you'll abide by. <laughs> Economics, huh? As a result, when product prices fall in the market, consumers are either more willing or more able to demand a greater quantity of output. Although each additional unit provides less and less marginal utility, the price of each additional good is less expensive, and so to the consumer, it's worth buying additional units. As a result, a decrease in price level in the market causes an increase in quantity demanded of a good or service, and a movement along the demand curve from point A to point B. When product prices rise in the market, consumers are either less willing or less able to demand the same quantity of output. As each additional unit of a good becomes more expensive, consumers will reduce the quantity they demand because each additional unit satisfies less and less utility. However, the first initial units of a good have a higher marginal utility, and so consumers will think it's worth buying them, even at higher prices. I mean, you've got to satisfy that utility, right? As a result, an increase in price level in the market 
causes a decrease in the quantity demanded of a good or service, and a movement along the demand curve from point B to point A. Fundamental changes in market conditions can cause consumers to demand a lesser or a greater quantity of a good or service at every price level in the market. This is caused by a change in market demand, and it is visualized by a shift of the demand curve. There are five determinants of demand. Price of related goods, income, number of buyers, expectations for the future, and tastes and preferences. There's actually an easy way to remember these five determinants. Together, these determinants form the acronym PINET. A change in any of these five determinants, due to some change in market conditions, will cause a fundamental change in market demand, which will lead to changes in price and quantity in the product market. A rightward shift of the demand curve indicates that demand has increased in the market, and a greater quantity of output is being consumed, no matter the price level in the market. Higher or lower prices? Doesn't matter. Consumers are buying more of a good or service. A leftward shift of the demand curve indicates that demand has decreased in the market, and a lesser quantity of output is being consumed, no matter the price level in the market. Higher or lower prices? Doesn't matter. Consumers are buying less of a good or service. Let's take a closer look at demand. The price of related goods refers to the price of substitute and complementary goods. A substitute good is a product that performs the same task as another good and can easily be used in place of another. Coke or Pepsi, chicken or beef, coffee or tea. These are great examples of substitute goods. A complementary good is a product that works in combination with another good to satisfy utility. Socks and shoes, milk and cereal, peanut butter and jelly. Each of these combinations are usually purchased together and are great examples of complementary goods. A change in the price of a related good can be a catalyst that fundamentally changes the demand for a good or service. For example, suppose that the price of Gatorade, a substitute good for Powerade, decreases. Because Gatorade and Powerade are close substitutes, consumers will simply choose to buy greater quantities of Gatorade because it's cheaper than Powerade, and it does the same job. This means consumers will buy lesser quantities of Powerade at every price level. So, a decrease in the price of a substitute good will cause a decrease in the demand for a good in the product market. Now suppose that the price of butter, a complementary good to bread, decreases. Because bread and butter are complements to each other, consumers usually buy one when they buy the other. If the price of butter decreases, consumers will buy greater quantities of butter in the butter market. Then, after buying more butter at a cheaper price, consumers will choose to buy greater quantities of bread at every price level to use along with the butter they've already purchased. So, a decrease in the price of a complementary good will cause an increase in the demand for a good in the product market. A change in consumer income can be a catalyst that fundamentally changes the demand for a good or service. For example, suppose that a consumer gets a job and receives a pay increase, leading to an increase in their disposable income. Now suppose that that consumer is looking to purchase dress shirts for his new job. With more disposable income to spend, the consumer will buy greater quantities of dress shirts at every price level. So, an increase in income will cause an increase in demand for a good in the product market. Now suppose that the state government raises income tax rates to pay for new roads, meaning you keep less of your paycheck after taxes, leading to a decrease in your disposable income. Now suppose that you're looking to buy a new car. With less disposable income to spend, you may no longer be willing or able to purchase a car regardless of the price level. So, a decrease in income will cause a decrease in the demand for a good in the product market. A change in the number of buyers can be a catalyst that fundamentally changes the demand for a good or service. For example, suppose that a massive wave of new immigrants comes into the country, leading to an increase in the number of consumers in the housing market. With more buyers in the market, a greater number of consumers are both willing and able to purchase homes at every price level. So, an increase in the number of buyers will cause an increase in the demand for a good in the product market. Now suppose that online streaming services replace the DVD player as the main mode of movie watching, leading to a decrease in the number of buyers in the market for DVD players. With fewer buyers in the market, 
a lesser number of consumers are both willing and able to purchase DVD players at every price level. So, a decrease in the number of buyers will cause a decrease in the demand for a good in the product market. A change in expectations for the future can be a catalyst that fundamentally changes the demand for a good or service. For example, suppose that consumers in the gold market expect the price of gold to rise next year. If consumers anticipate that gold will be more expensive in the near future, they'll decide to buy gold now while it's cheaper. And so, consumers will buy greater quantities of gold at every price level. So, the expectation of a price increase will cause an increase in the demand for a good in the product market. Now suppose that consumers in the market for cars expect that the economy is headed for a recession. Fears of high unemployment and economic uncertainty will cause consumers to buy lesser quantities of cars at every price level. So, expectations of an economic recession will cause a decrease in the demand for a good in the product market. Lastly, a change in consumer tastes and preferences can be a catalyst that fundamentally changes the demand for a good or service. For example, suppose that a popular new weight loss craze calls for consumers to cut beef out of their diets. Consumers who try this new diet will stop their consumption of beef. And so, consumers will buy lesser quantities of beef at every price level. This change in consumer preference will cause a decrease in the demand for beef in the beef market. Now suppose that with rising gas prices, consumers decide that it's a great time to buy more fuel-efficient vehicles, like the Toyota Prius. As consumers move to buy smaller vehicles with better gas mileage, consumers will buy greater quantities of the Prius at every price level. This change in consumer preferences will cause an increase in the demand for the Prius in the market. And that's market demand. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my market supply video, or you can click here for my micro minute video on the law of diminishing marginal utility. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.